In the 21st century, whenever you hear someone mention the term old money, it's unlikely they're referencing ancient banknotes gathering dust. On the contrary, this is a phenomenon that indeed goes beyond the superficial fortunes made overnight by Silicon Valley whiz kids or Instagram influencers. This kind of wealth has endured, meticulously cultivated and safeguarded through multiple generations. Yet, navigating the waters of old money through years, decades, or better yet, centuries, involves steering through seven make-or-break stages. Indeed, every single stage plays a crucial role in doing one of two things fortifying financial stability or ushering in the collapse of a family's economic empire. In today's video at Old Money Luxury, we'll grant you one-of-a-kind access to each of the seven stages of old money generational wealth by examining the financial arcs of legendary clans who've achieved the Herculean task of sustaining their prosperity. And then we'll contrast it all with the sagas of many families who faltered at keeping their coffers filled to their proverbial brims, as we describe. The seven stages of old money. The first stage, what we'll call the foundational generation, acts as a pivotal moment that determines the family's financial trajectory for years to come. This stage is defined by a patriarch or matriarch creating a groundbreaking venture, or deftly maneuvering through shrewd business deals that not only fill a market void, but also redefine an industry landscape. It's that first member of the family who gets the ball rolling. And in this stage, fortunes are made, and the groundwork for lasting prosperity is laid. For example, the Dupont family is nothing short of an American dynasty, a monumental force that has profoundly shaped the nation's industry and economic vitality. Originating in the early 19th century under the visionary leadership of French-American chemist Eluther Irene Dupont, the family initially focused on gunpowder manufacturing. Their ascent, however, was meteoric. Through relentless innovation, savvy diversification, and masterful management, they established an indomitable empire. As of 2020, the family's net worth has soared to an astonishing 16 billion, shared among more than 3,500 living relatives. But their influence extends far beyond sheer financial prowess. They've practically written the economic history of the state of Delaware and played a crucial role in the economic development of the entire East Coast. This is a family that has done more than accumulate wealth. They have become a cornerstone of American capitalism. Contrast this with the unfortunate saga of the DeLorean family. Imagine John DeLorean, an audacious pioneer in the automotive realm, broke away from the pack to launch his own groundbreaking venture in 1975. It wasn't just a car company. It was poised to become an epoch-defining revolution in automotive design and technology. The promise was almost palpable. This was a brand destined not just for profitability, but for an iconic, game-changing status that could have rivaled the most storied names in auto history. But alas, the reality was less kind. Hindered by a perfect storm of factory malfunctions, design imperfections and legal quagmires, the enterprise spiraled into a financial abyss. Instead of bequeathing a lasting empire of innovation and wealth, John DeLorean left his descendants with a poignant legacy of unfulfilled potential and missed opportunities. Therefore, the foundational generation stage is the linchpin. Get it right, and you're looking at a legacy of enduring affluence, like the DuPonts. Get it wrong, and you risk leaving your progeny with nothing but a cautionary tale, unfortunately like the DeLoreans. Although who doesn't still watch back to the future and marvel at those lovely vehicles? However, getting rich is just the opening chapter in the saga of old money. Once the coffers are filled, the next critical stage is establishing a framework of values and virtues that shape the family's character. Actionable principles like hard work, frugality and philanthropy serve as a moral compass that not only helps preserve wealth, but also garners respect within the community. But failing to instill these principles can set the stage for a rapid decline in fortune and reputation, sometimes as quickly as a single generation. Consider the Rockefeller family. John D. Rockefeller Sr., the patriarch, was a staunch advocate of hard work and thriftiness. The family maintained its unity and sense of purpose through regular reunions aimed at reinforcing these core values. Additionally, John D. Rockefeller basically wrote the Old Money Whispers, while New Money Shouts handbook for his family, and thus the entire country, by instilling the values of quiet success and privacy in his many descendants. Contrast this exemplary focus on values with the cautionary tale of the Frick family. 
Henry Clay Frick, the formidable American industrialist and key player in U.S. steel, amassed a staggering fortune that seemed unshakable. Yet, what he failed to establish was an ethical and moral compass to guide the family's wealth stewardship. This crucial oversight left his wife and children ill-equipped to sustain the family's financial empire. Lacking a focus on ethical conduct and value setting, they indulged in a lavish lifestyle and squandered opportunities for meaningful investments, causing a slow but irreversible disintegration of the once mighty Frick fortune. Therefore, the second stage in the life cycle of old money serves as a moral litmus test. Families like the Rockefellers who embed strong values within their DNA not only protect their wealth, but also elevate their stature. Those who neglect this stage, like the Fricks, find that wealth without values is as unstable as a house built on sand. The third stage in the journey of old money, what we'll call investment in longevity, serves as a defining moment for families intent on preserving their wealth. A family at this stage diversifies its portfolio, investing in sectors that not only grow, but also withstand economic tremors. To cement their social and economic position, these families also forge alliances and relationships that serve to strengthen their status in the high-stakes game of long-term wealth. Think of the Rothschild family, a paragon of this principle. Originating in the late 18th century, their banking empire spread like wildfire across Europe. But they didn't stop there. Their diverse investments in various sectors like finance and real estate ensured that their affluence not only persisted, but also flourished, even when the economic tides turned. On the flip side, meet the Stroh family, once a titan in the American brewery landscape. With a family fortune valued at an eye-popping nine billion in today's terms during its 1980s zenith, the Strohs made fatal errors. Saddled with debt from ill-advised acquisitions and failing to catch trends like the light beer movement, their fortune dwindled. Their inability to diversify and adapt led to the sale of their brands, extinguishing a 149-year history in the brewery business. The lesson here is clear. Investment in longevity is often the stage that determines whether a family's wealth sustains or disintegrates. Make astute investments and relationships like the Rothschilds, and you've got a robust legacy. Misstep like the Strohs, and you're penning the final chapters of your family's financial story. The fourth phase, dubbed the Inheritance Challenge, amplifies the intricacies of sustaining family wealth. As the family tree expands, so does the labyrinth of wealth distribution, making each new generation a potential pitfall for asset dilution. It's here that sharp families lean into meticulous estate planning, employing trusts, legal safeguards and financial consultation to prevent their fortunes from fragmenting due to inheritance taxes or internal feuds. A case in point is the Hyatt Hotel's founding family, the Pritzkers. They have deftly navigated this challenge by implementing efficient estate planning, distributing their wealth across multiple beneficiaries via trusts and other legal frameworks. This has effectively safeguarded their assets, so much so that their strategies have played a role in the success of figures like J.B. Pritzker, the current governor of Illinois. Contrast this with the saga of the Vanderbilts, whose name was once synonymous with American opulence. Despite accruing substantial wealth from shipping and railroad enterprises, they stumbled at this critical stage. A lack of prudent estate planning, coupled with extravagant spending, led to the disintegration of their fortune, leaving them with only a shadow of their initial wealth. The takeaway is clear. The inheritance challenge stage serves as more than just a fiscal juncture. It's a defining moment that determines a family's enduring presence in the exclusive world of old money. The fifth stage, and one that isn't talked about enough, is social responsibility and philanthropy, and marks a pivot in the old money journey. Having amassed a financial fortress and a set of family values, the focus typically shifts to making a meaningful impact on society. This philanthropic commitment is dual-natured. It's not just an ethical duty, but also a calculated strategy to sustain familial influence and social standing. One family that has excelled in this arena is the Mellon family. Their focus on philanthropy is both broad and targeted, spanning higher education, arts and environmental conservation. Through foundations like the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and the Richard King Mellon Foundation, they've funded everything from art conservation and higher education to economic development and social impact investments. These contributions serve a dual purpose, 
enriching society while perpetuating the family's favorable reputation. In stark contrast stands the Maxwell family, whose philanthropic facade disintegrated amidst financial scandals and sordid affairs. The patriarch Robert Maxwell faced numerous financial imbroglios that not only led to his empire's collapse, but also tarnished the family name. Additionally, Maxwell clearly failed in teaching social responsibility to his notorious daughter, Jelaine Maxwell, whose horrific involvement in a global child exploitation ring locked her in jail, and the family's name in infamy. Therefore, philanthropy and social responsibility in the context of old money is neither an option nor a whimsical endeavor. It's a carefully crafted strategy integral to a family's enduring reputation and societal influence. While the Mellons showcase the transformative power of responsible philanthropy, the Maxwells serve as a grim reminder of the fallout from moral and financial failings. In the realm of old money, the sixth stage, wealth education, is of course a non-negotiable pillar. Here the older generation assumes the mantle of financial educators, instilling not just the mechanics of money management but also the values that have underpinned the family's enduring prosperity. And this instruction goes beyond pep talks at the family summer barbecue. It often encompasses formal training and mentorship, arming the younger generation with the tools required to manage the obligations that come with opulence. Take the Arno family, the brains behind LVMH, the luxury goods conglomerate. The patriarch, currently the world's richest man, Bernard Arno, holds regular meetings with his children to dissect business strategies and impart financial wisdom. It's no casual affair, but a concerted effort to educate the next generation on both the nuances and the gravitas of managing a colossal fortune. This focused approach has allowed them to maintain, and even grow, their luxurious $500 billion empire. The seventh stage and final stage, legacy and cultural impact, represents a pinnacle of achievement for families navigating the complexities of old money. Those who reach this zenith are etched into the annals of society and culture, moving beyond mere financial power to become influencers of history, social mores, and even academic discourse. For instance, the Kennedy family is synonymous with American political and cultural influence, but their impact is not restricted to Capitol Hill. From the arts to media and popular culture, they've transcended the traditional confines of politics to carve out a unique niche where Washington meets Hollywood. Through their philanthropic endeavors and political activism, they've moved beyond being just affluent individuals to become enduring cultural symbols, shaping the society they inhabit in a variety of ways. In contrast, consider the Astor family, who were once icons of New York's social elite and key players in American culture. Although by all accounts still a very comfortably wealthy and influential family in the United Kingdom, over time, their preoccupation with ostentation and social status contributed to their diminishing societal influence. Unlike enduring powerhouses like the Rockefellers, who continued to wield influence across various sectors, the Astors have often seen their larger role in Western high society recede from cultural leaders to historical anecdotes. Thus, reaching this seventh stage is more than just maintaining wealth. It's about shaping the zeitgeist, influencing social paradigms, and ultimately leaving an indelible mark on society. And now we'd like to see you in the comments. Which of the seven stages of old money do you personally believe is the most important? We can't wait to hear your input. And if you're feeling like watching more right now, why not click the video on screen to view the top 10 rules of old money for wealth and happiness. We'll see you there or in the comment boxes. And as always, thanks for joining us for another episode of Old Money Luxury. Cheers, until next time.